What is up dudes and lady dudes? Welcome back to Just Notes guys. Today I've got another deck profile for you. This time we are looking at Metal Foes. This deck just got five brand new cards out of the last set Blazing Vortex. Um, I know a lot of people don't really like the set overall, but I do think some of these cards are pretty interesting and definitely worth noting in the deck. This is actually my first time ever really trying to build Metal Foes, so definitely an initial build, definitely have some interesting ideas here. Um, just kind of messing around with some things. I'm not saying it's the most optimal build. If anything, it's more of a fun build, but I definitely have some ideas that I think are interesting and I would potentially want to expand upon in the future, but we'll obviously get to those when we get to those. So without further ado, let's just jump into our list. Starting off with our main deck monsters, the Metal Foes lineup. We'll start with the Vanillas, I guess. This is probably the best place to start here. Three copies of Metal Foes Volflame, three copies of Metal Foes Stealin', three copies of Metal Foes Gold Driver, and three copies of Metal Foes Silvered. They're all good in their own way, um, straight up. Like, they actually all are, like, really solid. They do the same similar things. The only things that change from one to one are really, like, their statistics, right? Their level, their scale, and their uh, attack and defense, mainly. Um, so the two best ones are definitely Volflame and Gold Driver. Volflame is definitely the best one because it uh, it's the biggest body, so it's 24, 2,000, and uh, it's level 7, so it can help you get into, like, Odd Eyes Vortex plays, which can be very, very strong. Um, the only downside with Volflame is it can't be normal summons, so sometimes these can be better just because they're normal summons, but, yeah, they all have a good stat. 2,400 attack, 2,100 defense, 1,900 attack, 1,700 attack. They're all pretty solid, so worst-case scenario, you can always try and just play a, a simple beatdown strategy of just, like, hitting over your opponent and uh, putting them in a corner that way. But they're all good. These are your low scales. These are your two high scales. And uh, they all do the same exact thing in scale, by the way, if you don't know much about it. Metal Foes, they all can target another face of card on the field while in scale. Destroy that card, and then you can set any spell, uh, any Metal Foes spell or trap card directly from the deck. So you get a fusion, you get one of your traps, you get whatever you really want in that situation. There. All right, next up we have uh, some of our new cards, but mainly just the, the Metal Foes monsters that actually have effects. So three copies of Melcaster. She is the new girl. Uh, there. Two copies of Bismagear. I've considered playing Bismagear at more than two, but I think for this list, I'm just keeping it there. And then one copy of Metal Foes Vanisher. Uh, straight up, 100% honesty with you guys, I believe that Metal Caster and Vanisher are straight up the two best cards out of all the new cards. The, the, the spell's okay, and I don't like either of the extra deck monsters. I just think both of these are actually really solid, though. Um, okay, so Melcaster is very good. She's essentially now just like the new best Metal Foes monster. She is a low scale. She has the same scale effect, pop a card, set another spell or trap. But if she's destroyed uh, by battle or card effect, she can uh, add one of your Metal Foes monsters that's face up in the extra deck back to your hand. You just can't activate it in scale. You can still summon it, still use it as an extender. Uh, you just can't activate it in scale that turn. So that's the only thing. Still a big body, 2,000, 2,500. And then Bismarck Year, she's classic. Same thing with the scale effect, but if she's popped uh, on end phase, she'll do a little Skarm action. She'll add you a Metal Foes from deck to hand. Very solid as well for helping you grind, continually getting you, um, you know, like a, a card back to your hand. And then Vanisher. He's the really interesting one. He's like the super different one from all the other cards. If he's in scale and any other card you control, or if a monster specifically, sorry, is destroyed by card effects specifically, you can add a Metal Foes card from your graveyard back to your hand. Which really nice is this is any Metal Foes card, so this can help you sh get extra deck monsters back into your extra deck to do them again. This can help you get a fusion back, a one of your traps back, anything. So very, very cool. That's actually pretty nice. And it's a low scale. Sometimes you'll see um, decks when they have like a weird, awkward monster like this, like you can't pen summon him because he's too high a level. They'll they'll give him like a weird scale, so he doesn't fit in scale either. But he, if you don't want to, if you can't pen summon him, he's kind of stuck in hand. He's just a scale for you. Pop a card, he'll get you a card back for free. Like no big deal. He's actually pretty solid there. Then you have his monster effects. Um, he can like target two face of cards you control, including a Metal Foes card, destroy them, then summon himself. That's not always the best, but if you're destroying stuff like Melcaster and Bismagear, they'll make up the advantage anyway. Um, but it does get him on field. He's level nine, so he can contribute to um, VFD strategies, even though I'm not really building that here. And I don't think it's smart to build a deck around VFD right now, considering it could get hit at any moment. Um, and then when he is special summoned by the effect of a Metal Foes card, he can target and banish a monster your opponent controls. So sometimes you have the ability to do that on your opponent's turn, but mainly you just like do that over and over again and just like, boom, 2900 body, banish a card. 2900 body, banish a card. 
uh, turn after turn, which is pretty damn good. So I like him at one. I'd even consider him at more than one because in the scale, he's still pretty solid uh, there. But uh, for now, just sticking with the one. Um, so that is it for all the Metal Foes cards, or monsters, I should say. They're very, very good. For an additional engine here, I'm playing one Cleefort Scout and one Cleefort Monolith. Um, this is definitely debatable, I would say, but it, it really depends on your what, your what your preference is. Some people just max out on Scout because they want to see it. Uh, the main idea is this is just a really simple engine that gets you to a Cyber Dragon Infinity. You just scale Scout, pay 800 to search Monolith, then you pop Scout with a Metal Foes, set up your scales, pen summon them back, and there you go. Two level 5 machines, that is a Cyber Dragon Infinity. Or just extra fodder, their, their vanillas on field so they can be used to make like Alkahest and stuff, which is pretty cool. So, yep, just a nice little engine. Because we have a search card, we play at 3 that can get this. I didn't worry about playing multiples of it because they can be bricky in multiples, so just the one is playing good for me. All right, next up we've got, this is this is probably the spiciest part of the deck, uh, to be honest. Uh, two copies of Sangan and one copy of Witch of the Black Forest. These are essentially our normal summons in the deck. I don't have my Rescue Rabbits right now, so if I was playing a little more offensive build, you could definitely go with like a Rescue Rabbit engine or some other engine that's just like a plus one, gets you bodies out and stuff. But um, in place of that, and a really interesting idea I've been messing around with are these. Essentially what these do is when they're sent to the, from the field to the graveyard, they'll add you any monster that's 1500 or less attack or 1500 or less defense. And you just can't uh, activate um, cards or the effects of cards with, the, with that card's name till the, uh, for the rest of the turn. So you can't really use them, but they can search generic hand traps for extra disruption. They can search pendulum monsters. And while you can't activate them in scale, I believe, with these restrictions, you can just add them and then pen some of them out just for that extra, you know, body on field, which is still pretty good. So very, very cool. A lot of times this is like a slower kind of controllier, more um, Metal Foes build. Like, so you just end up searching hand traps and just saying like, well, I can't do a ton on my turn. So let me just, let me just grab an Ash. Or if I have Ash, let me just grab a Bell and I'll have Ash Bell try and, try and like do your worst through that. And like maybe another disruption, which is pretty cool. So I like that. You can even link them off and just get like free cards and, and that really works. So um, I think they're pretty cool in the strategy. Just me testing them out. They've been pretty decent so far. You don't have super offensive turn one, um, turn ones in this kind of build, but you do end up with like two, three, four disruptions uh, a lot of the time, which is pretty cool in its own. All right, so moving into the hand traps, obviously you gotta be able to search stuff off of the Sangan and Witch. Two copies of Ash, one copy of Bell, one copy of Skullmeister, and one copy of Crow. Uh, these are kind of just all here because these two are only, or uh, Witch can only search these two, and Ash can only search these two. Actually, so Ash can search the Crow as well. Um, but I just wanted a variation, and uh, Sangin's a hard must return, so even though I think Sangin's generically better grabbing Ash and Bell and Crow, um, he's a hard one's return. So if I'm going to draw two, I'd rather draw like one Ash, or one Sangin, one Witch, instead of double Sangin, right? Because hard one's return. So um, yeah, just like that variation. And they're all fine. They're all pretty good hand traps in the format um, anyway, so it's totally fine that way. So that is it for all the monsters in the main deck. Moving on to the spell lineup. One Metal Foes Fusion, one Para Metal Foes Fusion, and one Full Metal Foes Fusion. These are all good in their own way. Full Metal Foes being able to shuffle itself back into the deck so you have infinite fusion spells while drawing a card when you do that. So it just gives you a resource back anyway. Para Metal Foes allowing you to fuse using a monster from your face-up extra deck as well just makes for very efficient uh, fusion summons, which is very nice. And then full Metal Foes Fusion, this just allowing you to quick fusion on your opponent's turn is also very good. This can allow you to do stuff like trigger Mithrilium, trigger Orichalc, or summon a new Alkahest on your opponent's turn, which uh, can be very, very good on, in its own right. So uh, definitely think these are mandatory. I, I think this card's decent, but sometimes I wonder if it's really worth it because sometimes I'm like using this, but I want to use regular Metal Foes and like it shuffle itself back anyway so I can reset it next turn, whereas this card has to be like added off specifically back by like Metal Foes Vanisher once it's down there. And so it's, it's a little bit weird, um, but I do think... Um, they're all fine. I just think these two are definitely still the best ones. I just, uh, Paramount Foes is like decent. Oh, sorry. Not nick that. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I still think it's worth it. Um, I just don't like drawing them because you get them so freely off your engine. Like you never want to draw the Metal Foes spells and traps. All right. 
Now moving into the rest of the spells, just some simple search cards. Three, Summoner's Art, and two, Painful Decision. Uh, Summoner's Art can search you either Volflame or your um, uh, Cleefort Scout, and that's very, very good. So four copies of Scout or six copies of Volflame, very good either way. I do wish there was one other, like, a, a metal foes monster that could be like also also what is both things a low scale no both things high scale so i wish there was also a low scale you could search off the summoner's art but unfortunately uh there there isn't uh so whatever but it's still very good just giving you those two options painful decision also very good because this can give you any of the low level um metal foes monsters whether it's steel and silvered or gold driver which is very nice and sends one to grave which actually can be nice for as far as like thinning your deck a little bit, but also uh, putting one in grave can be nice to set up for like Mithrilium later on, which is really good. And then for the traps, uh, Metal Foes Counter, two of those, one Metal Foes Combination. Um, this is it for the Metal Foes Trap lineup. Um, I kind of get conflicted on these. Sometimes I like Combination, but because this isn't a super offensive version of the deck that goes for like crazy Wombo combo boards, I'm not that worried about playing multiple Combination because uh, a lot of versions of this deck like to just play like Magician Souls, and then you just play a ton of cards that get you to Souls, so that way you set like two combinations uh, in your Spell and Trap zone, then you use a Soul to send both to draw two cards, and then these two will both add you two more cards, uh, two more Metal Foes monsters, so that's pretty cool, but uh, I'm not running that in this build. This is definitely more budget than a Magician Souls build. Hopefully we get a reprint of that soon, by the way. And then Counter. I actually really like Counter because Counter allows Vanisher to just be way, way better. Because uh, if any card is ever destroyed on your field by battle or card effect, you can just special summon a Metal Foes monster straight from the deck. And then so you can just like special summon Vanisher and then Vanisher can just like banish a monster your opponent controls. So it can disrupt your opponent or on the following turn, you could just use a Metal Foes to pop your own card, triggering counter to then summon Vanisher, like banish a monster. And now you have a 2900 body and you're looking at a potential OTK. So both very good in their own way, but um, you've know, got to got to play them. And the last card I play in the deck is Skill Drain. This is more of a control -y version of Metal Foes. I honestly think there's more of a route to even potentially play more Floodgates like this because of one particular thing. So Skill Drain is just insane because not a single Metal Foes monster, if you look at actually at our entire deck, other than like Vanisher, not a single monster in our entire deck actually has an effect that activates on the field outside of our extra deck, right? Um, and so Skill Drain just becomes an insane interruption that just like, so few decks can beat. Obviously, Eldritch doesn't give a fuck about it, but everything else, essentially, like, skill drains are just, like, so, so nasty. Um, and the other cool thing is the way our deck works with any Floodgate is we could Floodgate our opponent, and then on our next turn, we can just pop the Floodgate with a Metal Foe scale, get a free card for it, trade one for one, and then we can be offensive after we just said our opponent can't do anything. So that's, like, really, really valuable, I think. So I definitely think there's, like, a route to potentially make that work with more floodgates or maybe in the side deck or something, but definitely, definitely think skill drain's insane because none of our Metal Foes monsters uh, have like effects that activate on the field outside of the extra deck. So that is it for the main 40 cards in the main. You guys know how we do. Um, like I said, I'm definitely curious about looking at other builds as well, like adding certain other engines from Pendulums, being a little more offensive with it, more combo-y. Because like I said, you really don't do like crazy turn one boards in the deck, but uh, this version at least. So moving into our extra deck here, starting off with the two Mithrilium, two Alkahest. Some people don't like two, but I actually really do because of like the full Metal Foes fusion, being able to just like quick fuse Alkahest uh, after we've already Alkahest because it's a soft once per turn. So you could like hit him with a disruption, then summon another one, hit him again, and uh, that can be pretty good. Uh, one Orichalc. A lot of people don't like Orichalc. A lot of people have dropped it, but I actually really like it because I'm playing like a IP Mascarena, like somewhat focused, like extra deck where you can like quick link this or Mithrilium off uh, with Mascarena to then um, like trigger their effects. So like Mithrilium can just like special summon your Vanisher out from um, the extra deck, which then gives his ability to banish something or Orichalc just straight up pops a card when he's sent to grave which is very good. And then the metal, last Metal Foes card is Crimsonite. I'm not playing Super Poly in the mean, but I think you have to play it in the side. I just think that's one of the advantages this deck has that can allow you to beat any deck in the game is just hitting them to make a Crimsonite. So I played the one just because if you draw two Super Poly, the second one's discard fodder for it, so fine. Um, and that's, that's pretty strong. Like you just get to rip any two monsters off the field, essentially. Pretty good. 
All right, then for some links, we have uh, one gravity controller. This is really good for Orichalc or Mithrilium, just being able to get them off the field to trigger their effects. Mithrilium getting you like a Vanisher back to banish a card, getting Orichalc Centigrave so that he can just pop a card. That's not half bad. And then this card's actually annoying for a lot of decks to out. Uh, one Link Spider. Sometimes this is really nice for like a heavy uh, Metal Foes hand where you can like normal summon one of the small ones, make Link Spider special second small one, and then get into a Link without your pen summons. So then if you could just scale up, you can actually get a couple bodies on the board. It's very good there. Uh, one Hita. This is just a card that helps you open up zones, but also could have extra synergy like reviving Ash Blossoms. That's like the most played card in the entire meta game right now, um, which is pretty cool. Um, one IP Mascarena. Like I said, I kind of built this extra like, a little bit more built around IP Mascarena. You're doing a lot of plays with this where you're just like linking in a unicorn, but also using something like Mithrilium or Aura Count for an extra disruption, which is pretty cool. Or if you pair it with like a um, Alkahest, you just use Alkahest to like steal a monster. And then you use Mascarena to make unicorn and just double disruption there. Uh, speaking of which, Unicorn. And that's it for the links. Definitely one thing I would say is, is with space is super tight. So I do definitely have that feeling of like, I wish there was just like an extra big link I could play or have room for, access code, whatever, um, or whatever else you want to put in there. Just to like have like an extra card that um, just feels like a power play just by putting bodies on the field. Whereas like sometimes you could put bodies on the field, but maybe you don't have access to a fusion at that exact instance. And so if you don't, you can't really get to a card that allows you to apply a lot of pressure. So maybe Boral Sword, maybe Access Code, maybe even Avermax, something like that, I think would be very welcome in the deck. But like I said, space is pretty tight with the, the version I have going on at the moment. Uh, speaking of which, we're gonna finish up with uh, our two like boss monster packages, one Nova, one Infinity, that's for the Cleaford engine, and then one Av Odd Eyes Absolute and one Odd Eyes Vortex. Um, finishing up our extra deck. Obviously, these are pretty plain and simple. Uh, one thing I'm definitely surprised about is in this build, I haven't really been able to make Odd Eyes Vortex that often. You definitely can, and even the new monster is level seven, so it makes it even easier than it was before. Maybe it's just the build I'm playing right now where like making this just doesn't come up as often as you'd think. You honestly make this way more often, uh, which is just kind of weird, but hey, it works. I'm not mad. They do virtually the same thing. You could almost argue that Infinity is just straight up better, um, but they're both obviously good in their own right um, there. So yeah, that's it for the extra deck and the main everything all together. Um, the deck's really, really cool, guys. I definitely love the mechanic of like everything lets you pop something. So um, I think the options are very, very like vast with um, being able to potentially combine this with like a ton of other archetypes. I've thought about playing like unchained metal foes or you just like pop an unchained monster summon another monster then you get a spell then pop another unchained monster get another unchained monster and you literally just like rotate three of them then make like the unchained um link one or link two i mean and have like a met like a malkahest on field i've definitely thought about stuff like that i definitely think that it could be a potential alleyway for the deck there's also a ton of pendulum like mini archetypes and just generically good cards that obviously have great synergy with this deck and so I definitely hope to uh, definitely look a little more into this. I definitely think this deck can potentially be very, very, very strong. It just definitely seems like one of those decks that there's no one card combo. It's like bare minimum, everything's two card combo. Uh, but a lot of times it seems like three to four card combo is what you need. So one or two negates can definitely be a little annoying for you to have to work through and still have a play. So you just got to keep an eye on that and, and do your best to build, uh, to make a build that, that, you know, can do the best it can in this current format, the way Yu-Gi-Oh's really been played over the last couple of years. So still a very, very cool deck. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on the build. This is definitely, like I said, a, a definitely a, a preemptive build. This is like my first attempt at really making a Metal Foes deck, getting a little bit interesting with like the Sand Gan, which is the Black Forest stuff. I'm not even sure it's actually that good. I definitely want to splash some more stuff in and, and, and see what I can do. But uh, this is just an early cool build if you like it. Definitely more, I would say more control oriented than other Metal Foes builds. But the deck can just plop multiple beat six on the board so easily and just kind of go in, which is really like a fine strategy uh, once you've simplified the board state. So yeah, that's going to do it for me here, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you want to see more deck profiles from me in the future. Like I said, leave your comments below. I'm, I'm definitely curious to see what you guys think there. And uh, I guess I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.